This is Access 2010 and what I want to do is show you how to actually get started with queries in Access. So here you can see I've got my objects of which I've got my tables at the top here. And if I just open that I've got contacts and you can see here I've got a list of contacts. Some of them are based in London, others in Sussex and Essex. I've also got whether or not to send them a letter or an email and whether or not they're actually on my send list over here as well. I'm just going to untick a couple of those because I need some to be unticked for this exercise. So what I want to be able to do with this query is to be able to find everyone in London and everyone who is a yes on my send list here. So just so you know, with queries it's not just about selecting data, which is what we're going to do now based on certain criteria, but you can also use it to delete information as well. You can get it to do that based on particular criteria. So people who may have left a company, you could just get it to go through and delete them. You've got make table queries for creating a new table based on particular criteria. So again, that could be people who have left a company and you just want to archive them, or you might just want to archive information after or before a particular date. There is also append queries as well, which allow you to actually take information from one table and add it to another. So it should be similar data to do that kind of thing as well. You also have update queries. So for example, if over here London changed its name to Greater London, which it sometimes used, you can get it to go through, find all the Londons and change them. Also useful for prices, salaries, where you might want to give increases or decreases based on particular criteria. So they're the main sort of queries that you can use. But we're just going to take a quick look at using select queries. So I'm just going to close this table. I'm going to go to my Create tab across the top here. I'm not going to use the Query Wizard because they're really for more complicated queries. I'm just going to go to Query Design. And there you'll see it comes up with my Show Table. And it's also got a grid down the bottom. Here are my tables. I can click on the Queries tab. I can see Queries or both. A query can be based on information in a table or in an existing query. You can do both. Most commonly you would create the information from a table, but if you've already created a query and you want to then narrow that down even further or use the information in there, you can base your query on a previous query. It can start slowing things down a bit, but nevertheless it does work. So I'm going to add this one here to my query. I can do that by double clicking on it or clicking on it and then clicking on Add. And you'll see it appears here. I'm going to click on Close. You can see my query is called Query 3. We're going to save that in a moment. I'm just going to resize a few of these things here. So at the top here is where you would see your tables, although we've only got one at the moment. And down the bottom here is my query grid. And what I want to see are things like the title, first name, last name, address information, and that send as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add my fields here into this grid. And I can do that by either clicking and dragging it down to here. And I can do the same for the first name. I can click on the drop down over here and choose it from here. I could also double click on the ones that I want and they go immediately afterwards. I'm just going to choose that one there as well. You can move them around. I can click here to move that across. I can move it back. So you need to be at the top where the arrow is a little pointer like that and you can move it and you can move it back. Okay. I can sort here as well on more than one thing if I want. I can click on this drop down list where it says sort here in this grid and you can see I'll put it into ascending order which starts at the top with the letter A all the way through to Z. If you've got numbers, it starts with numbers first, then letters. Descending does the reverse order, or you can have not sorted. If you do more than one of these, because I could do this as well, this will sort by first name and then by last name. If I wanted it to sort by last name first and then by surname, I need to have it to the left. So it basically sorts from left to right. So that's the order that it does it in. I'm not going to have a sort on that. Okay, so here is my query. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at it, what the results are. I can click on Run, or I can click on this View button. They do the same thing in a select query. If I click on it, you'll see it says Query 3 here. Here is all the information, and down the bottom here it's saying it's record 1 of 11. That's the record that I'm currently on. You'll see that as I move down that list, 
it changes and I could change it. I could type in 10, press enter, and it takes me to that particular one. So no criteria has been applied here. I'm going to do that by getting it to filter effectively, showing me only those in London. So go back to here. I've got my button. It's the view button and I just click on the geometry set which takes me back to the design view. Okay, so if I want to have criteria based on London, and you'll see it says criteria and it says or underneath, I can type in London. It's not case sensitive. When I click off of that cell or move to another one, you'll see it puts it in quotes. It doesn't matter. I don't have to put it in quotes, but it will do it for me. You could type it in if you like. So let's see what that's done. If I click on run, you'll see it's now showing everyone in London. It's saying that there's only seven records here. You can see some are getting a letter, some are getting emails. I'm going to go back to my view. I'm actually going to add in just another one, which is send. So I've got that in my list there as well. Now the send one, if I just run that again, is just a tick box. It's yes or no. So if I want to see all of those in London that I'm going to send something to, I'm going to do yes. If I now run it or click on view here, and you'll see I'm alternating with those. It now shows me everyone in London and everyone that I'm sending something to. And you can see here, it's only got five records down at the bottom. Let me just go back to view again. What I'm going to do now is I know that there are people in Essex. So by typing in Essex there, Every line is part of the criteria that says it's an or. So I'm doing London, that is send has yes in it. And at the moment it's Essex and it doesn't matter what's in the send there. So I'm getting London and yes as the send and just Essex on its own. If I want to say Essex is yes as well, I just have to put it in there too. And you'll see that when I run it, it's now included Essex in that list. I'm going to go back to my view. So I could do more. I could add in information here. I could add in Mr, for which I would have to put it on both lines for it to do it for both London and Essex. If I hit run, you see it's narrowed it down even more to show only three. So this is useful. What I want to do now is I'm going to save this query so that I can use it at any time. You'll note on the side here, it's got query one and two, which are ones I've made earlier. There is a save button here as well. If I go back to view, there is a save button at the top here. So I'm going to click on that. It doesn't matter whether you do it in the design view or in the query view, the select view, which you might actually call table view as well. I always prefix my queries, although I didn't do it over here, with QRY. Queries and tables can both be used in forms and reports, and sometimes it's a good idea because they could both have the same name to just prefix queries with QRY and tables with TBL. It's sort of a standard sort of thing. You can do what you like, but it just makes it easier to read and to find. So I'm just going to call this one first query. Click on OK and you can see it's changed the name at the top there. I can run it. And what's really great is it has saved that. I don't have to recreate this. I'm going to close that. If I double click on my first query, up it comes. I could go into view, I could make changes. I could, if I wanted to, save this as a different query. So that is getting started with queries in Access 2010.